Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, how many love God this morning? How many love Jesus? How many love the Holy Ghost? Amen. Let's stand. Let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Lord's day, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, for your spirit in this place. God, we thank you for your love in this place. God, heal me with the Holy Ghost saying. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Help us to have a good time in the Lord today. Help us to give you adoration. Praise, oh God. It belongs to you this morning. We thank you, Lord. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. Yes, yes, Lord. Name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. This time, Sister Eva, she's going to leave us in the hills. Let's sing at Calvary. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.
or weary, Jesus, we love you. something about Sunday, amen. Yes. That was the day Jesus resurrected, amen. He had all power in what? In heaven and in earth. He still has all power in heaven and earth, amen. We'll permit him to have his way in our lives today. Yes. You'll see that he can have power and move some mountains out of your life, amen. Yes. Let's give attendance to him today. Give undivided attendance to him. Let's see what he has for us today. Tonight, uh, right now, we'll like to wait on you for the Sunday morning tithe and offering all Christians pay tithe and give the offering as unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. I let that sister ever remember if you're praying for the gift and giver today. Loving Lord, we do thank you for the privilege and honor to be here. We ask that you bless both the gift and the giver in yes, Jesus' name. Lord. Amen. 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 Jesus. This time she's never she's gonna sing a special voice.
love, we have peace with God. Amen. 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 We want to turn your attention this morning. Can you hear me back there? Yeah. Kind of sore. <laughs> we want to turn, uh, turn your attention this morning to the book of 1 Kings. All right, now I'm glad I turned it up now. <laughs> 1 Kings chapter 13. Beginning here, verse 11. I'll give you a little time to get there. Wait a minute. <laughs> Tell me to read the Bible this morning, son. <laughs> First Kings chapter 13. <laughs> Beginning here, verse 11. like to follow us on the screen. We'll have it here momentarily. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 13, beginning at verse 11. If you haven't started to watch for it, we're on live on Facebook. Get the word out there, amen? amen. amen. We're on Facebook live. I think Sister Peterson started one. Yep. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't be, don't be scared of your church. Amen. <laughs> They're going to know I go to church. What? You don't want them to know you go to church. One fellow went to Bible school for three years. He said, man, I made it through these whole three years without anybody knowing I was a Christian. That ain't the kind of testimony. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't the kind of testimony I want. Amen. <laughs> no, that ain't the kind of testimony I want. I want you to know I'm a Christian. Amen. Amen. Not by my works, but by my love. Amen. Amen. My, the love of God in my heart. Yeah. Shed abroad by the Holy Ghost. First Kings chapter 13, beginning here at verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethlehem. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethlehem. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And the father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said, said unto his son, saddle me the ass. Now, they cursed there. Yes. No. All right, that's a donkey. Yeah. All right, just want, to, just want to clear that up. Yeah. Amen. I want you to go through a bout. Anyway. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode there on. And he went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, art thou the man of God that came as from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also, as thou art. An angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. I'm going to use verse 18 for a text verse. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house that he may eat bread and drink water, but he lied unto him. For the help of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, and your help, we want to preach on a message entitled, The Cost of Listening to the Wrong Voice. Amen. The Cost of Listening to the Wrong Voice. Sister, remember, you're praying for the message messenger and those who are listening this morning. Our gracious Lord, we humbly come before you, God, giving you all the praise, glory, and honor. Lord, we are asking that by the Holy Ghost, you would move, God, because we know that the Holy Ghost is the right voice. Move, touch hearts, God, and we also ask that you would be with Pastor. Give him a fresh unction. God, give him the words of eternal life. Save that one who needs saving this morning. And God, we just ask and pray that we don't just be hearers of your words, but doers also. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listening to the wrong voice is costly. There's a cause and effect for every action. Amen. I remember I had gotten saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I had been about been saved for about a year and a half. And I had about a 
year and a half left in the service. And so I decided to go to college part-time to get my general studies degree. And I enrolled in this course to study religion. It was an elective. They said, they said well, you can sign up for this course. I was like, man, I'm going to Bible school. Oh, yeah. I might as well sign up for it, give, give it a shot. What the hell? I thought it was cool. <laughs> and so I checked out this book, and I started reading it. And folks, I don't know what it was, but my, I believe my wife was with me, was in the living room, was reading it. Yeah. Reading this book on religion. Okay. And something about the book, I know a lot, didn't, didn't read the Bible really in that sense, read a couple of verses here and there, would read, have some kind of a devotion like that. I didn't know the scriptures, I wasn't versed, didn't understand the word of God in that sense. And so as I'm reading this book, this book written by God knows who, I don't know, I didn't know their lives, I didn't know them. But I was reading this book pertaining to the course on religion, and the Holy Ghost just didn't bear witness with me. Amen. Something about it just didn't, it did not sit well, yeah. didn't feel right. Huh. I immediately felt convicted as I was reading this book. Yeah. So I put it down. And later on, as I went to Bible school, I figured out why I felt convicted. Huh. I wasn't strong enough in the faith to discern right from wrong. That's what I'm telling you, folks, as you read these different books or whatever, you listen to these televangelists, you need to know their lives. Right. So I'm not so keen on giving out books that's outside of the word of God. One thing they said during Bible school, the teachers would quote this often, never judge the Bible of other books. Yes. Judge other books by the Bible. Right. I'm never going to endorse another man's book and put them on the same playing field as the word of God. Amen. Most false teachers... What you'll find is they're selling their books. They're not pointing you to Jesus. They're not sharing the gospel with you. They're not telling you to read the Bible. They're telling you, hey, read my book. My book is easier than the Bible. If you read my book, you'll be able to understand the word of God. You know what I'm talking about? A lot of these people don't even walk with God. And we're looking to them to get devotional, get godly advice. They're telling you to read a couple verses, but they don't even read a couple verses. They're telling you to do these things, but look at them. They look like the world. Yeah. Now, folks, how would you feel if I had a mouthful of gold teeth and some dreads right now? <laughs> would you still take me the same? No, you wouldn't. You'll judge me. Yeah. And the folks quit to say, well, don't judge that person. Don't ju I'm going to judge. Yeah. I'm going to use discernment for right or wrong. Now, that's not essential to getting saved, but once you're saved, you should change. Amen. Yeah. There's, there's a sanctification yeah. process yeah. that takes place after salvation. Yeah. But anyway, our Bible reader portrays the very essence of God, the very heart, the very soul of God. What's that preacher? He'll never change his word. He'll never change his word. That's why we point people to Jesus. That's why we want you to get in your Bible personally. We want you to know God because when you know God, you can hear his voice. He said, my sheep hear my voice and follow me. That's what Jesus said, right? And so God will never change his word. King Jeroboam was a man of industry. He had been appointed by God, but decided to sell God out by creating false worship yes, sir. to keep the people from serving the true God. So God sent the man to prophesy against his altar. Mm -hmm. Church, I want to serve notice and tell you this morning that it's serious business when you assume the office of the priest. It's serious business when you assume the office of the priest without being appointed by God in that position. Amen. Jeroboam was king, and he decided, number one, to create false religion, but on top of that, to assume the office of a priest. God didn't call you to do that. Come on. God didn't call him to do that. Everybody that says they're a Christian is not a Christian. Yeah. Folks, you need to wake up. Yeah. Everybody that names the name of Christ isn't a Christian. Everybody that says they're a Bible scholar isn't a Bible scholar. Yeah. <laughs> Just because they hold an office in the church does not mean they're right with God. Amen. The man of God goes there to foretell the destruction of the altar and of its idolatrous priests. And he gives Jeroboam a sign that the prophecy should be accomplished. And so Jeroboam enraged, he was heated. And he decided, he told, he told them to lay hands on the priest, I mean, on the man of God, to seize him. And so as he's laying hands, as he stretched forth his hand, or stretched forth his hand, God dries it up. It withers. Yeah. 
Come on. And he can't even pull it back in. Come on. And now he, all of a sudden, he changed his tune towards the man of God. Pray for me. See, people always want you to pray for them when they're in a pickle, so to speak. Yeah. When their back is against the wall. Amen. Amen. That's fine. We love people, love God, or whatever. You just got to love. Got to love it anyway. Yes, people dog you out, they talk about you. But they call on people that are closer to God when they're in something. Amen. Amen. That's right. When they're in trouble. And so this man, or uh, the king rather, he calls on the preacher to pray for him. He wasn't aggressive anymore. He's, he's telling the preacher to pray for me. And so the preacher did. He stood in the gap and he prayed. And God healed the man. God healed the king because the man of God prayed. And so the king said, come home with me and I will give you a reward. The man of God said, if you will give me half of your house, I will not go with you. Neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. Why? Because the Lord commanded the man of God to go in the city for one mission. Go into, go into the city to pronounce judgment upon Jeroboam and upon the altar. That's why he was there to be, that's why he was supposed to be in the city. He was supposed to go in and come out. One of the long trip was about 12 months. He wanted, he wanted him to go in, wanted him to come out, didn't want him to go the same way he came in. Oh, how do y'all wish we'll start preaching this again? Amen. You're not supposed to come to church and, and leave the same way you walked in. God told him to go in. I don't want you to go out the same way you came in. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Be there. That's right. Do you see how important it is to look in the details? Mm -hmm. This is early on in the chapter, early on in 1 Kings 13. Folks, nine days, the Christian would have been like, oh, well, I guess it's okay. The king seems like a nice guy. He seems, he seems like he repented. It's okay to go to, to his house. Separation is something that's not preached and taught about anymore. Mm -hmm. That's right. Not church world. That's right. A Christian has no business being yoked up with an unbeliever. That's right. Yoked up in line. Yoke is what the oxen would have on the neck, their neck. They would work together. They would they'd be able to look at each other. They would be yoked up right in line with each other. A Christian has no business being yoked up with an unbeliever. That's the Bible. God knows that evil communication corrupts good maps. Yes. Turn with us to 2 Corinthians. We're going to go through the Bible. We'll have Bible study and we're going to preach. How does that sound? 2 Corinthians chapter 16. Six, it's no 16. Chapter 6, <laughs> verse 14. And we'll get into this. Talking about how God does not change his word. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Paul the Apostle speaking here. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't be joined together with unbelievers. Amen. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? That's a question. And what communion have light with darkness? There's light right now. Where's darkness? On the other side of the world, right? <laughs> they have no fellowship. They're separate. On the other side of the world, dark right now, Germany and all those places. But we got light on this side. Right. Light and darkness have no fellowship. <laughs> and what concord, what agreement have Christ with Belial with something that's worthless? Or what part have he that believeth with an infidel, infidel, unbeliever? He's not faithful. He's not faithful. She's not faithful. He's not simplified. He's not always faithful. He's an infidel. A believer has no business being with an infidel. Then he says in verse 16, Wherefore come out from among them. Come on, sir. Come on. And be together. No. He says, be separate. Save the Lord and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Amen. Jesus, upon getting saved, upon getting saved, upon getting saved, folks, he calls us to come out from the unbelievers. He calls us, amen, to be sanctified, to be set aside for his use. King Jeroboam had caused Israel to abandon their God. By, play, by replacing it with false worship. They abandoned the truth to replace it with something else. To replace it with another gospel. To replace it with another translation or another Bible. 
The very name Bethel means house of God in Hebrew. Beth means house. El means God. Bethlehem. Beth, house. Lahem means brick, house of brick. So you understand why Jesus is the bread of life, right? And so the man of God, he's at the house of God, and they got false worship going on. on. Brother, and these things ought not be. That's right. That's right. Folks, here the king is at the altar sacrificing God knows what, and up comes the man of God to pronounce judgment upon the house of God. God sent this man in there to warn Jeroboam that he might repent and change his ways. God can destroy us if he wanted to. He sends judgment for us as a, as a method for us to repent. Amen? Amen? God doesn't want to destroy men and women. He wants to save us. Yeah. He wants to deliver. Yet, Jeroboam increased with the number of high places and unauthorized priests, thus providing greater opportunity for his people to enrage in his false worship. His religion was part truth and part error. It was man-made, man-centered religion. When someone wishes and way takes precedence over God's purpose and plans, it's idolatry. The only way two people can walk away with two different translations is one person is trying to put their will on the will of God. The scriptures tell us plainly that they're not for private interpretation. It's not I'm okay and you're okay. Somebody has to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it really isn't. It's not I'm okay, you're okay. It's the, the scriptures are not given for private interpretation. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Either God is right or he's wrong, but he's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. The man of God said to the king in, ver in, in verse 9 and 10, 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 9 and 10, for so was it charged me by the word of the Lord. God commanded me. He said, eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. He said, so he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel, not by the way he came to the house of God. Come Keep on, that in there. You should lead the church different, right? right? So he's winning. He's winning. He's listening to the word of God. He's winning. Won the first victory. Does that mean the devil's going to stop by you? Just because you're successful one time? Folks, there's no other gospel. There's no other gospel. Church, I want you to know something plainly this morning. There's no other gospel. There's no other gospel. The reason we have so many denominations is because people try to put an emphasis on their will. Come on. On God's will. Come on. It's only one church. God is first holy. We're holy in this church. We're full gospel church. Yes. Right. We're not going to back up because it's modern day contemporary and all this other junk. I don't care. God's going to build a holiness church in Portland. Amen. A separated church. Yes. I don't care if they think it's old fashioned. I don't care about that. Come on. I don't care. I like the old time way. That's why we like the hymns still because it's still a message. Those folks used to walk with God. They ain't that contemporary same joke. Oh, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our All right, we know every praise belongs to God already. Say something else. Yes. Now we, we, we sing those things It's fun and whatever the case is But there's a message, amen Those people used to walk uh, 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 to Used to really walk with God A lot of them were really uh, uh, were holiness And were set aside for God I like those songs When I see the blood, I'll pass over you, amen When I see the blood, amen I'll pass over you There's only one gospel, amen There's only one Savior, amen There's only one Holy Ghost Baptist Paul said it this way in Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. These false brothers are coming in on the way. Come on. Trying to pervert the brother. Trying to pervert them. Trying to seduce them. Trying to draw them away. From the gospel that saved you. From the God that worked in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so these people, that's why I gotta watch out for you. Mm -hmm. We don't just come over your house just because we want to all the time. Come on. We check it up on you, make sure everything is okay. Yes. Amen. So in some cases, God is reaching out to the person. Yes. In many respects, God is reaching out, mm -hmm. showing you that He loved you, amen. Yes. Amen. We're just tools. We're just instruments. We call on you not because we want to all the time, but because we love God. Amen. We love people. Amen. All right. 
And so Paul is letting them know. He said this in verse 8. He said, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach another gospel unto you than that which you, we, we have preached unto you, let them be a curse. Paul said, I don't care if an angel comes back and preach to you something different, let them be a curse. I don't care if I come back and preach something different. He was taking it serious. Yeah. Folks, there is no other gospel. The gospel is good news, not bad news. Amen. I got good news for you this morning. Jesus loves you. Yes, he does. Jesus paid the penalty for you. That Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sins. Paul said it this way. Jesus gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present world according to the will of God and our Father to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ can deliver us, amen, yes, from amen. this present world. Yes. See, a lot of people, they'll tell you, well, we're not on the law anymore. It's grace, yes. amen. But grace teaches you to deny ungodliness in this present world. Yes. Grace was never us an excuse to sin. Yes. But a lot of false teachers will tell you that. They'll tell you, well, grace is okay. And we're under grace. God has breathed in grace, so that means I can slip and slide and do whatever I want to. That's not true. No, grace teaches you to deny ungodliness yes. in this present world. Yes. Jesus told the lady that got caught in adultery, go and sin some more. No, go and sin no, no more. more. No right. more. Amen. Paul said, let him who steal, steal no more. Amen. Not keep your hand in the cooking jar and, and, turn, and, and, and have a lookout man at the front watching out. The Bible says there was an old prophet that lived in God. And his sons came and told him all the man of God had done. Ain't they excited? Just saw a miracle take place. God judged this man because he was going to lay hands on the man of God. And his hand withered up. Then the man of God steps in the gap for him and prays for him and God restores him. So they had sight. They tell them their daddy, the old prophet. I want you to pay attention to that. Old. The old prophet. <laughs> and his sons came and told him. And so the daddy asked. He said, boys, where did he go? Where did he go, George? Mm. And he said unto his sons, saddle me the ass. Remember when they cursed him? Mm -hmm. That's the donkey. <laughs> so they saddled him the ass and he rolled down mm -hmm. and went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that came is from Judah? And he said, I am. Folks, God basically told this man. I want you to pay attention to the details. As a preacher, as a Christian, you got to live in the details. Yes. You got to live in the details. No small error is a light thing. I want you to pay attention to this because you'll understand God mm -hmm. a lot more. God basically told him to get in and get out. There was a, there was a sense of urgency. You don't have time to be taking a break. Be yeah, sitting down and, and eating a sandwich. Come on. Come on. This is an idolatrous town. They may want to kill you. Yeah. The devil certainly does. You think the devil happy because you, you preaching about Jesus? Oh. So it gave him a right to sit down on the oak tree. Did God tell him to take a break? It wasn't that far of a trip. It really wasn't. This fellow is sitting down on the oak tree when God told him to go in and get out. Trip from Judah to Bethel was about 12 miles. Now, in our days, you'll be like, yeah, I would have definitely took But these folks, were, they were fit 12 miles as a piece of cake. Yeah. A day's journey was 20 to 30 miles. So 12 miles is nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing to them. When you take a break from the will of God, you leave yourself wide open for the devil. That's right. That's true. That's right. You leave yourself wide open for the devil. Amen. When you take a break from the will of God, you leave yourself. That's when the mistakes happen. Yeah. People that are there. Folks, the pandemic didn't give me a reason to, to, to stop my service for God. Amen. Amen. Oh, no. Amen. Amen? Yeah. No. Come on. Death doesn't give me a reason to stop my service for God. Right. My grandma died. I was still I was in Bible school the next week. Still in school. Why? Because God called me. God saved me. Amen. Folks, when you go through situations, you realize if you're a Christian or a sinner or not. Come on now. Yeah, right. That's right. Amen? That's right. The situation should drive you closer to the prayer closet, not away from God. Amen. Not drive you away from God. Right. It should drive you further down on your knees. Yes. It should cause you to press into the presence of God. Then he said unto him, come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. 
For it was told to me by the word of the Lord. Pay attention to that. Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This lets you know the trip couldn't have been that bad. If God is telling him not to drink water, <laughs> not to eat, the trip couldn't have been that bad. Amen. Couldn't have been that long of a journey. That's right. He said unto him, I am a prophet. I want you to pay attention to that. We're going to go back to that. Also, as thou art, and an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drink water. Someone who once believed right, now believes wrong. He even mentioned the word of God. Like, I'm not supposed to do this. Now, you know, folks, if he mentioned the word of God, the Holy Ghost was dealing with his heart. Yes. Folks, the Holy Ghost knows how to convict. You ever been convicted before? Yeah. Hope you have. <laughs> Hope you're sensitive enough to be convicted. Amen. All right. God dealing with his heart, telling him the word of God as he's rehearsing, rehearsing it in his head. As he thinks about, as he mentions this to the man, he has to think about the miracles that God had done to Jeroboam. The destruction that was caused at the altar. The healing at the altar. See what happens when you listen to these clowns that say they had, they had a vision. Yeah, come on now. This is, this is why I'm not so king on saying God talked to me. Amen. All right. Amen. God told me to do this. God told. See, you see what happens when you super spiritualize everything and you listen to people that don't know the Bible. You get tripped up. That's right. You see what happens now <laughs> when God God gave me a vision. You just ate too late. Been having nightmares lately too. I've been eating too late. Stop eating so late, you'll stop having a nightmare. Eating the pepperoni and pizza. Amen. God is never going to tell you to do something, folks. It's contrary to the word of God. Amen. I'm not a huge fan on invoking the name of God unless I really feel that this is the voice of God and it's in line. Wait a minute. Don't lose me on this one. It's in line. With the word of God. Amen. This is why we want you to read the Bible. Because I know you stay your best chance when you know the scriptures. Amen. When you write it about the truth. Yeah. Not just know it, but you have to write it about the truth. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to something. Matthew chapter 5. We're going to insert it right here. Matthew chapter 5, verse 26, 27. How are we doing out there? I'm a little sleepy. Should have had some coffee. I've been, been here for a little while. It's 7 o'clock. Oh, right. Usually a little earlier. Amen. We want to make sure it's cool for y'all. Amen. Nice. Smells good, etc. We want you to be comfortable. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Jesus speaking here. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. No, we're not under the law, no preacher. <laughs> Folks, Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. In fact, he adds weight on what, what was already in the law. Mm -hmm. Not only should you commit adultery, the act, but you should commit adultery in your heart. Oh, yeah. Come on. You got to stop listening to these false teachers that tell you we're not under the law anymore. Yes, we're under grace, but that doesn't give us a pass, amen, to, uh, 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 to do whatever we feel like doing. Amen. Jesus, uh, John the Apostle said it plain, the beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see whether they are God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. He said, try, test the spirits. How can you test the spirits if you don't know the word of God, don't know the God of the word, you don't have the proper standards to test it? That's right. Folks, the only way you and I can defeat a lie is by knowing the God of the word. Knowing the word of God. Test the spirit. If it's a lying spirit, if it's the wrong voice, amen, the spirit of God will bear witness. But you got to know what's in the word of God. He says, hereby know ye that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh, is of God. 
And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Listen, people that have that spirit of Antichrist, they're not the Antichrist that happens later on, but they have the spirit of Antichrist. They deny God, they, they, they deny the power of the resurrection. They deny what Jesus can do. They even deny his virgin birth. They deny the incarnation. They deny what he did on the cross. They say, well, he was just a good man. He was uh, just a prophet. Man, folks, he was born than a prophet. He had to be God and man in one in order to be a strong work of the devil. Yeah. And was talking to this man. This man, uh, what, was up in Bremerton, me and my wife, soul winning, was going house to house. How come the people that are on the grace don't tell you to go soul winning? Don't, don't tell you to knock on doors. Come on. That's in the New Testament. Yeah. <laughs> How come they don't tell you that? Because there's an agenda. Anytime you read something, anytime you even look at something, there's an underlying agenda that the person, the author, is trying to accomplish something. And as a Christian, you have to find the underlying agenda. Is it right? Is it of God? Or is it not of God? I'm never in this world. I don't care what the televangelists say. I don't care what the so-called Christian author says. I'm never going to contradict the word of God and allow that man or that woman to determine my salvation today. Amen. First, uh, First Thessalonians 5 verse 12. And we beseech you, Paul the Apostle said, we ask earnestly, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and warn you. We want, we want you to stay with us. We want you to stay with us. Stay with us. Amen. We want you to understand. I don't want you to die lost. Right. I don't want you to be deceived to believe a lie. I really don't. My agenda is to make sure you get to heaven and to make sure I get to heaven. That's my agenda. Amen. I'm not promoting another book and telling you to read something else. Come or on. telling you to check this YouTube preacher out. You're going to be Come deceived. On. You're going to believe a lie. Come on. You don't know their lies. Paul is telling us. This is the Bible. Yeah. Folks, this is what the Bible says. Yes. He's telling us. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 13. Read it. Write it down. Take a picture of it. And we beseech you, brother, to know them which labor among you. Yeah. Amen. 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 He's talking about the preacher. Yes. Yeah. And I'm over you in the Lord and admonish you and warn you. The word admonish means warn you. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Folks, you need to know us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, they'll tell you this to give, give the preacher double honor, but that's what the Bible tells you. Yes. Now, I'm not in it for that, but that's, that is the Bible. Nevertheless, that's the New Testament. Amen? Amen. Well, we're doing okay. Yeah. You need to know us. Mm -hmm. You need to know who's preaching to you. Yeah. You need to know my life. My life's an open book. My wife's life's an open book. You need to know us. Because if you don't know who's preaching to you, you can believe a lot. Is my life consistent with the word of God? Come on. That's why I'm not so keen on television. I'm, I'm going to say this over and over. Because there's a lying spirit in the world. Yes. That's telling you they want your money. They want you to do all these things. They want you to buy their books. They want you to buy their cassettes and, yes. and CDs and all this other junk. But they don't want to preach the gospel to you in love. Amen. There you go. He said, know them that labor among you. Know us. Now that's Bible, right? Yeah. You spend time with God, folks. You won't set yourself up to believe a lie. If you spend time with God, you won't set yourself up to believe a lie. John said, try the spirit, test it. Put what the voice is telling you to the test. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you this. The voice of God ain't telling you not to come to church. Mm -hmm. no. I'm going to say that. That's not the voice of God. I don't care what you say, what kind of excuse you make, but the voice of God ain't going to never tell you to go to church less. The voice of God ain't going to never tell you to, to, uh, 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 to stop reading, to stop praying. That's not the, do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. What would the voice of God tell you to do less than you weren't doing before? <laughs> you was coming to church and then you stopped after, wait, why would God tell you to do that? And then they tell a preacher like I'm bo bo a bozo the clown, like I'm just a dummy, like I don't read the Bible. You may not know what's going on, but I know the spirit behind it that's manipulating it. Because I know God of the Word. Amen. And I'm not trying to brag or boast, but I have to spend time in the Word of God to understand, to know, to know what to watch out for, to know what to look out for, to know what to pray for. Amen. 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 I want nobody in here to see me doing judgment and say, Preacher, you didn't tell me. It's because of you. Mm -hmm. This is serious. 
Amen. I got to give an account for every single soul that's in here. Yeah. And some people, man, you just stop asking. That's a bad spot. That's God. Right. You just stop asking. Don't even mention it anymore. Because the longer somebody says no, the more they say no, the harder they get. They don't think they're getting hard. Mm -hmm. But the heart's getting hard. So you just back up. You just pray for them and love them. Amen. Be concerned. Now, I have folks do all kinds of stuff to us, man. We, me and my wife, we used to check on this man named Mr. Francis up in the uh, Tacoma area. And we had a real burden for him. Mr. Francis, go by his house all the time. Go check on him. Hang out with him. Spend time with him. And he would always... Say, no, not today. Not today, sir. Not today. I, I, I will one day. Mm -hmm. Now there is no more time. He died. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in one saved, I always say. Mm -hmm. Now there is no more time. We tried to go see him. Heard he was in the hospital. He had got some, uh, he had got his foot amputated or whatever. He had gangrene, yeah. whatever the case is. God is still reaching out to him. Mm -hmm. Still extending that hand of mercy to him. He doesn't see it. Mm -hmm. The devil sees it. Yes. The Christian sees it. God the Holy Ghost. God the Father. God the Son sees it. Mm -hmm. Reaching out. Loving him. He can't say he didn't have an opportunity because he did. Yes. That's right. It's nothing we want to rejoice in. Folks. He's seen the hand of God. The man of God. He had the word of God. Yet he changed the message. Mm -hmm. Stay with us, folks. Come back to earth. Come back to earth. He knew the right thing to do because he had the word of God. Mm -hmm. He knew what was right. Mm -hmm. But some, somewhere along the line, something in his heart already wanted to go back. Uh -huh. All he was looking for was a reason to go back. Yeah. And so, folks, you see how you rationalize things? Somebody, well, if somebody called, that means, that means God want me to do it. Mm -hmm. And so somebody came, just, just as you know. The old prophet came and, and told him what he wanted to hear. And so guess what he did? He went. He went. We're holding this church period. I don't believe in one saved, I always say, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Then say when you pray at the age of 8, 10, 9, 11, 12, you name it. He didn't say that. Folks, you can't believe a lie. Folks, if it wasn't was possible to lose your salvation, the devil would still have his, yes. so to speak. Come on now. Like the one Baptist preacher said, I don't believe in one saved, I always saved. If that was the case, the devil would still have his. Folks, it's possible to lose your salvation. Yes. Jesus telling us, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. What does the word continue mean? Stand fast, yes. firmly. Continue doing the hardship, doing the happy time. You gotta continue. Yes, yes. Right. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Mm -hmm. We believe after a man or woman gets saved, they grow in grace, in the grace and knowledge of Christ. That's called the sanctification process. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Sanctification means what? Oh, man, don't make me look bad, class. Don't make me look bad. Set aside for God's use. All right, good job. After salvation, the Christian is set aside for God's use. Amen. I want to show you something now. After salvation, the Christian is set aside for God's use. It means you grow. You're not doing what you were doing when you first got saved. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. I'm going to show you something. Are we there? Yeah. 23. Jesus, speak here. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. These are religious leaders. For ye pay tithe to mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Yeah. Does that sound like... He's telling them not to pay tithe and give an offering. He's just saying it's not essential to salvation. It's not essential to salvation. He's saying what's essential is judgment, mercy, and faith. So you don't have to pay your tithe before you get saved. He said, whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
But Jesus, after you get saved, yes, you sanctify yourself, but you also sanctify your finances as you learn, as you grow. You can't just sit here and say the law. Well, that's on the law. You know what else is on the law? How to have a proper relationship. Amen. I should be married. My sister, in other words. Who came up with that? Not the pagans. God came up with that in Leviticus. So that's letting us know that that's not what it means. He's talking when he's saying we're not under the law. We're not under the ceremonial practices and so forth. Don't have to observe this day over the other. Don't have to follow this dietary restriction. But there's still laws we have to follow. Like loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul. Isn't that loving the law too? Yeah. Yeah. Loving our neighbor as thyself, isn't that loving the law? Yeah. All right, so that's not what he's talking about. He's saying the weightier matters. These folks, they'll, uh, these folks, they'll, they'll, be, they'll, they'll, they'll have the outward shell of religion, so to speak. They'll pay their time, but their heart wasn't right. How many times have you seen people that are put a little more in the offering of the, uh, of the tithe, so to speak, uh, uh, because they sinned or whatever, and they want to make it up? No, you can't make up for sin like that. Amen. <laughs> I've been guilty of myself. That's all right. How many times have you seen people, amen, that, that have, preachers that have taken more than they should have? Come on. The Bible says tithe. That's what Eli's sons was doing. Taking it by force. We don't take it by force. They ain't like me. We're checking your check studs and making sure you're paying it, right? It's really between you and God. Come on. That's right. Come on. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Say, okay, I'm all right. That's right. But folks, the honest and truth, I pay mine. Yeah. And the reason I know it to be true and, and, and it to be the word of God, I've been paying mine. Even before I was a sinner, and God has blessed my life. The windows of heaven are open. Yeah. I've never had to want for anything. Yeah. We're not in it for the money, but we're not going to back up from it either. Yeah. I know it's Sunday morning. But well, that's all right. Yeah. Can't catch some of y'all the other day, so we got to tell you now. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Yeah. Get it up there. We believe in the Holy Ghost baptism. Mm -hmm. This is something that all these things we're talking about, they're controversial now. Wow. What happened to the godly America? Come on. You know, in the 1940s, 1930s, I think four out of five people had the baptism of the Holy Four out of five Christians had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Believed in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now they'll tell you quit. These false teachers will tell you quit. Oh, it's not for us today. Mm -hmm. Well, in the new covenant, that, that's what the new covenant is about, being filled with the Holy Ghost. The church wasn't started until people was filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Right. To Christians were filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what you need in your life. Yeah. That's right. yeah. You need the Holy Ghost baptism huh. in your life. Right. John the Apostles, John the Baptist said it this way. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Yeah, yeah, so often yeah, people are so yeah. concerned, they ain't saved. Whatever the case is, God, I, I preach, I want to get water baptized. You got to get saved first. Yeah, water yeah, baptism yeah. is just an outward, outward show of what happened in the inside. Yes, yeah. yes. You don't get saved to be, or you don't get baptized to be saved. Come you on. get baptized with water because you are saved. Yes, right. It's an outward show of what's already happened on the inside. Yes. The water baptism is symbolic of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Yes. Going down in the water represents dying to sin. Yes. Coming up, amen, represents the resurrection, living a new life, living a, living a new life. But see, he said, John the Baptist said this way, did it, said it this way. Yeah, you need to be water baptized or whatever, but there's somebody mightier, amen. He's going to do something I can't do, amen. He said he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He said, whose brand is in his hand, and he will through the purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner and burn the, the chaff with unquenchable fire. Let me tell you something. Those bad habits that you can't kick, all you need to do, number one, is be saved, amen. Number two, amen, is pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Touch the hand of God today. You need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Yield your heart, your tongue to God. And you'll speak in His unknown language. Amen. You'll have all this love in your heart. You'll have all this joy in your soul. You'll have all this peace in your heart today. Amen. Amen. Chap is poison. So what God does by the Holy Ghost baptism, while we preach it, while we believe it, while, while you can't really be holy until you get it, amen, is because of the Holy Ghost. He makes you look more like Jesus. He burns up the poison in your life, but he keeps that good, amen. I said he keeps that good in your life, amen. I said he keeps the good in your life. The cost of listening to the wrong voice. And it came to pass. As they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. 
And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah and said, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee. Oh, thanks, just got real. When you start invoking that thus saith the Lord, you need to listen. Come on. Things are real. He didn't say thus saith the Lord the first time. The first time the quote unquote prophet got the message, but now he got something from God now. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord. But came his back and has eaten bread and drunk water in this place, of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread, drink no water. Thy carcass mm -hmm. shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. The carcass ain't even going to be buried with your daddy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because your adversary of the devil goes about as a wrong line, yes. seeking mm -hmm. whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. He obeyed, he disobeyed yes, he the known, revealed word of God. Can you imagine the conviction he felt while he was sitting down at that table? Because he listened to his appetite. See why you shouldn't listen to how you feel? Yeah. Shouldn't walk in the flesh? Amen. Don't listen to how you feel. You've got to walk in the spirit. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yes. There's no guilt to those that are in Christ Jesus. I'm not guilty because I'm walking in the spirit. I start walking in the flesh, walking how I feel, walking about how who did me wrong and yeah, this one offended yeah. me and that one made me upset. I don't like this sister. I don't like that sister or whatever. How in the world can you say you love God if you hate your brothers? Come on now. That's right. That's right. That's right. That man was slew by the lion. The, the lion didn't eat him, but he was slew. The lion came in for one purpose, to destroy that man's soul. Didn't even care about the donkey. Dunk was sitting, sitting there looking. <laughs> what happened? He listened to the wrong voice. Yes. God is never going to contradict himself, folks. That's right. I want to show you one more thing. Well, actually, two more things real quick. First John chapter 2. Verse 13. Love not the world, neither the, thing that are in the, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Not talking about love in the sense that you can't love your phone, you can't love this and that and the other, but he's talking about the world system. The way the world does business, the fashions, trying to fit in, try that, that one and this one. I can't, I, I, uh, the, the sexuality of the world, that's what he's talking about. Then he said this, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the inclination to do what I feel like doing, without regard to God. Come on. The lust of the eyes. Mm -hmm. The inclination to look on somebody that's not my wife. Hello. Come on. Come on. That's right. I couldn't help it. <laughs> so you say, in the proud of life, that position. Don't love it. Promotion comes from the Lord. That's right. what the Bible says. It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that keeps the will of God, the word of God, going to live forever. But this is what he said. Little children, it, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, that spirit. Whereby we know that it is the last time. That spirit of Antichrist denying God. Yes. He said this. They went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. You see what I'm saying? Everybody that comes to church ain't a Christian. You see what I'm saying now? That's right. That's right. Circumstances, problems, situations separate the Christian from those that just profess Christ. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm not, I, folks, this is the Bible. Yeah. If, you, if you direct your attention on the scriptures, you'll realize it's, that it's the voice of God, not the voice of a man. Yeah. <laughs> they went out from us. Wait a minute, who? Who went out from us, preacher? The folks that were claiming they were Christians. <laughs> he said this, but they were not of us. The circumstance allowed them to reveal their true colors. Yes. He said they were not of us. He said they would. Uh, uh, he said if they were uh, had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Yes. But they were. They went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. This is how you know who serving God and who's just talking about serving God. Yeah. These are hard truths, preacher. I have to bring. I have to, I have to let the congregation know. Yes. <laughs> Let folks know the realities of the word of God. Yes. This is why I'm not so keen on saying this one's a brother and that one's a sister. You don't know these people. That's right. 
And I'm not using this, I'm not judging or condemning people, but you have to learn how to discern right from wrong. Mm -hmm. You have to learn. You have to learn. You have to test the spirits to see if they have God. Mm -hmm. You have to know if that's an apple tree. Is that a fruit tree? You have to judge. You have to use discernment. Yeah. Does, that, does that mean you cast people away? No, you pray for them. You love them. But everybody that names the name of Christ isn't a Christian. Amen. Jesus, you listen to the right voice. From that time forth, began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, sharply corrected the Savior. What you pay attention to that? He checked Jesus like he worked for Nike. <laughs> Saying, be it far from me, from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savior, savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Mm -hmm. Suppose Jesus would have listened to the wrong voice. <laughs> you know that flesh, Jesus, he was in the flesh too. Yes, he was. In essence, he had a human body. He was God and man in one, but he had a human body. The inclination to sin was there. Because walking in what being a man or a woman of the flesh, and even, even being saved, that, that sin nature is still there. You have to put that body under subjection. You still have to tell the flesh no. God ain't going to do all the work for you. You have to give God some of the work. When he don't take your free will away when you get saved, you still have to say no. You still Does that make sense? Jesus still had to say no. So there's that voice. Remember, testing the spirits, the consequences of the wrong, of listening to the wrong voices. That voice that told told that flesh what he wanted to hear. Now nobody wants to suffer. Oh, Lord, anybody woke up this morning and said, "God, I'm ready to suffer today." <laughs> Give you, I'm ready. No, he didn't do that. But he had to check that spirit that was influencing Peter. He wasn't possessed with the devil, but you can listen to the wrong voice, yes. even as a Christian. Amen. And you can think you're doing somebody justice Amen. when you're harming somebody. Amen. That's why we're doing things a certain way, folks. Amen. Folks, if you know what I'm talking, the folks that I talk to, Amen. because if you give somebody the wrong information, spiritually speaking, that can destroy them if it's the wrong advice. Amen. That can destroy them. And so Peter. Thank God we got a Savior, amen, that followed amen. the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, get thee this behind me, Satan. You say, it was not the things of God, but of men. Mm -hmm. He came to do the Father's will, not his will. Yes. Jesus, the name Jesus refers to his human nature. And Christ refers to his divine nature. And so the two together become the expression of the incarnation. The reason you don't see the name Jesus in the Old Testament is because he did not become flesh yet. Right. Amen. Doesn't mean he didn't exist. Right. He was already God. Yeah. But in the New Testament, Jesus came as a man. God came as a man. Oh. For instance, folks, and my wife can come to the uh, instruments. Before I got married, I wasn't a husband. I didn't assume that role as a husband. I was still, I still existed. Mm -hmm. I was still a man. But assuming that role as a husband, I wasn't until I said I do. Amen. Jesus was the savior of the world until he said, Lord, I do. Mm -hmm. I listen to the right voice. Mm -hmm. I go all the way to Calvary. Jesus Christ is man in one. Yes. He's what you need today. Yes. There's only one mediator yes. between God and man. Wow. It's not the voices that are going on in your head. Amen. <laughs> so in one right voice. What would be a day, saints? Which voice will you listen to today? The voice that tell you to sit down? Don't do anything with the message? Walk out the same? What voice are you going to listen to today? Why don't we stand? Everything's on the attack. Virgin birth is on the attack. The Savior's crucifixion is on the attack. His resurrection, all these things are on the attack. Doesn't matter. He's already accomplished every last thing I just listened. There's only one gospel. There's only one right voice. What voice are you gonna listen to today? You know, I'm thankful. The right, right voice.
voice today, the voice that went all the way to Calvary, the voice that listened to the Holy Ghost, the voice that accepted the Father's will, the voice that paid the price for our sins, that rose again. He said, my sheep know my voice, and they follow me. Come on, folks. You know who you are. If you need to come down to the altar, why don't we all come down, walk out on faith? Let's find a place to pray. Let's seek him. Let's listen to that right voice today. Abide it. Let him have his way.